Welcome everyone. This installment we're going to talk about the nervous system. Let's cover the uh, the anatomy of the nervous system. This is really important for us to understand how we're laid out here. The nervous system, as you know, communicates and it isolates and it does all sorts of fascinating things like collects information and synthesizes a response based on what it collects. So important for us to know how this stuff works. So as you know, nervous system is broken down initially into uh, two main components here. We have the central nervous system and central nervous system is essentially brain and spinal cord and then we have the peripheral nervous system and the peripheral nervous system is everything else and everything else can be broken down into a couple things here first we have to think about the cranial nerves and we have 12 of those so cranial nerves 1 through 12 and we'll talk more about those at a later time and then of course we have all of the peripheral nerves of the peripheral nervous system and these are the guys located in uh, the cervical system. They're the guys located in the thoracic system. These are 1 through 12. The lumbar, these are 1 through 5. And sacral, also 1 through 5. And then the coccyx. All right, so these are the peripheral nerves of the peripheral division of the central nervous system, uh, I'm sorry, of the nervous system, and then the brain and spinal cord make up the central components of the nervous system. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the next component here, and the next component of this is going to be, let's see how the divisions work out. So here is the nervous system, and the nervous system can be broken down into a couple different divisions. And the first division we're gonna look at is the voluntary division. And the voluntary division is also known as the somatic division. All right, so these are the things that are going to look at movement of muscle. So this is kind of important because we're going to eventually uh, take a look at this and see what it is that we can do to target certain components of the nervous system with drugs or with different procedures. So we're going to come back to that in a little bit. All right, the other side of this is the involuntary portion, and the involuntary portion is also known as the autonomic nervous system, and that's kind of an important concept because autonomic means auto, means automatic, essentially. So these things are happening without conscious awareness and conscious control. That's why they're involuntary. So the involuntary portion of the nervous system is the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system is, again, subdivided into two main divisions and we're going to look at those right now. So the first one is going to be the parasympathetic nervous system division. The other one is going to be the sympathetic division of the autonomic nervous system. So there are a couple ways to remember these things. The sympathetic nervous system is, uh, is known as the fight or flight and so it's kind of important for you to remember this because if you can remember all of the things that hap have to happen to your body in order for you to fight or for you to flee, for you to run away, and I always think about this from the perspective of a human being in the middle of the jungle being chased by a saber-toothed tiger, and if you think about all of the things that the human body has to do in order to get away from the tiger and get away from being eaten by the tiger, then hopefully some of these concepts will make sense. For example, the sympathetic nervous system is the one that's responsible for making sure that your legs get a lot of blood and oxygen so that you can run, for example, when you're in a fight or flight situation. It also makes sure that your vision, even at night, that you can see everything so that you can get away safely. So it causes things like pupillary dilation. So we'll talk more about the sympathetic, the effects of the sympathetic nervous system, but think fight or flight. Think about what do I have to do to get away? And then the other way is the parasympathetic nervous system. This is known as feed or breed. And this is pretty self-explanatory. So when you're eating, parasympathetic nervous system takes over, kind of shunts blood all to the, uh, to, the, to the bowels so that it can absorb all of the nutrients that you've just broken down and brought into your body. And then breed, of course, is self-explanatory. So there are a couple things that we need to pay attention to here. Um, even though this is the uh, the anatomy portion of it, we're going to get into physiology here very shortly. Um, 
it's important for us to understand that the communication method of the sympathetic nervous system is essentially conducted by way of a neurotransmitter called norepinephrine. And norepinephrine is also called noradrenaline. Right. And we're going to just kind of interchange norepinephrine and epinephrine, but understand that the actual transmitter of importance here, the one that is responsible for communicating a, an impulse or a message from the sympathetic nervous system all the way down to an organ, that is done by way of norepinephrine. So the way that the communication takes place is, uh, we'll talk about the physiology here in a second, but essentially it's that there's an impulse that's formed and it releases norepinephrine and it releases that or norepinephrine near an end organ so that end organ can do work. And some of the examples of doing work would be things like bronchodilation. So if you have norepinephrine released near, bronch, uh, near the uh, receptors in the bronchi, you get bronchodilation. And this makes sense because if you have to run away or you have to fight, you're going to need to bring in more air with oxygen and you're going to need to get rid of more carbon dioxide. So we need to make the bronchi bigger so we dilate them. You also need to do things like sweat so that you can get rid of the excess heat that's made. You'll also do things like vasoconstrict and vasoconstriction takes place in fight or flight to maintain blood pressure. So if you have vasoconstriction that takes place, you increase blood pressure. And you know that this is the normal stress response. If we stress somebody, if we scare them, if we make them do exercise, whatever, sympathetic nervous system is responsible for causing all these things. And it, of course, increase or elevates the blood pressure. And last but not least, the one you're probably most familiar with is that it increases the heart rate. Right, so fight or flight, think norepinephrine, and then think these uh, ultimate changes in body physiology. And remember that every body system has an opposing body system. So if this one elevates things like, uh, like sweat production and heart rate, and it causes vasoconstriction and bronchodilation, then the parasympathetic nervous system is going to do exactly the opposite thing. Now, it's going to do the opposite thing with the use through the use of a different neurotransmitter and that neurotransmitter is called acetylcholine and acetylcholine is generally abbreviated with a capital A capital C and a lowercase h by the way norepinephrine you will see it as NE and acetylcholine is the one that's responsible for triggering the exact opposite of these things all right so these don't equal another in fact they're opposites of one another so this is going to cause uh, bronchoconstriction or relaxation. Um, we're going to also have a decrease in heart rate with this guy. We're also going to have an increase in blood flow to the digestive system. So increased digestion. And then last but not least, we'll look at vasodilation here. So all of these things should make sense. If you can remember... Uh, the general divisions here. Remember that the voluntary side only we're going to be looking at muscle changes and then on the autonomic, the, the involuntary, the automatic side of things, do we want to elevate? Are we trying to run away or are we trying to relax and sleep? So these are critical concepts. You have to know these concepts. There are absolutely no two ways about it. You have to know these things. So study this up. There are a ton of uh, resources online and stay tuned. We'll talk about physiology of the nervous system next as it relates to pharmacologic principles.